Hi, I'm Elizabeth with Oliver Smith Jeweler, and in this video, I'm gonna tell you one of my favorite watch stories. This is the history of the Pasha de Cartier. The story goes that in the early 1930s, the Pasha of Marrakesh asked Louis Cartier for a watch. He wanted a special watch that he never had to take off. This would be a piece that he could wear into meetings in courts that looked very grand, but he also wanted a watch that was waterproof because he was known to enjoy a bath with his many girlfriends. So out of necessity for all these different activities, the Pasha was born. The Pasha is known for having this unique screw down crown that locks in the crown and makes the watch watertight. And the only issue with this story, although very fun, is that there's no proof that this watch even existed. We don't have any drawings. There wasn't a watch passed down through the family, just the story that Cartier gets to share. So fast forward to 1985 and we are experiencing a sport watch craze. The Nautilus has just been released the Royal Oak, and everyone is jumping on the all-gold Rolex Mariner train. Cartier wanted a watch that could compete with these new sports watches on the market, so who do they call? The sports watch design master himself, Gerald Genta. What came from that collaboration is the Pasha we know today. Now this Cartier watch design instantly got cold status because of the unique design of the dial. We have this circular case, which right away was a breakaway from kind of the rectangle, uh, more you know, hard lined watch designs we were seeing at that time. But it also has that square minutes railroad going through the middle. So you've got this contrast between the circle and the square gives it kind of an intense design element, um, also very masculine and was really embraced quickly as a sports watch. What I love as part of the Pasha history is that the Pasha was quickly embraced by women as well. So when the Pasha was first released, it was in a 38 millimeter. Mid 1980s, this was a huge size, very sports style women started to wear the 38 millimeter too. And they, it wasn't promoted by Cartier to women, but they like to embrace that masculinity and sort of like the power and the independence it represented. I just think that's kind of a neat feature uh, being a woman who loves big watches myself. Since the initial release, we've seen many different versions of the Pasha, different sizes, different complications. Uh, we've seen a GMT, a chronograph, probably one of the most iconic and confusing designs, I would say, is the Pasha that they released with the grail over up top of the dial. This is kind of a metal grail design and it's laid over the crystal as to protect the crystal as a dive watch. It's really cool. I've actually never been able to see one in person. I um, mean, it's definitely a design that sticks with you. That's something I don't easily forget. Around 2010, Cartier discontinued the Pasha. This is a marketing strategy that Cartier has used pretty frequently over the years. They will discontinue a watch line and then hopefully come back and re-release it at a later time, creating more hype and more desire. Uh, it's a very smart move on their part. So in 2020, we got to see the re-release of the Cartier Pasha. Like everything 80s and 90s, it's back. This time it was released in three different sizes. There is a 30 millimeter, which is what I'm wearing today. This is most commonly found with quartz movements. There's a 35 millimeter and also a 41 millimeter. Now these are both automatic pieces. They do come in stainless steel, also different precious metals. There's even a skeletonized version of the 41 millimeter, but all with the classic Pasha design elements. So I spoke earlier in the video about the round case with the square kind of railroad seconds hand design in the middle. This is a really pretty contrast and kind of what the Pasha has become most known for. Also the hands of the watch are the classic blue Cartier hands in a diamond shape. It really adds this level of kind of like luxury to the piece. 
If you have any additional questions on the story of the Pasha, leave them below. And if you've heard your own version of the story, we'd love to hear that too. Make sure to like and subscribe so you can see more content like this from us. Thanks for watching.